Hey guys, John here. Welcome to the course, How to Use Bus Force. This is video one, and today we're talking about the what and the why about Bus Force. So what this thing actually is and why we should use something like this in our workflow. So over here at the top, this says Bus Force Parallel Processor. So that's kind of our first clue, right? So a bus, right? So we let's say we want to put something, on, we want to put this plugin on maybe a drum kit or maybe a group of vocals, or maybe we have a track that we want to master. So we would put a plugin like this on top of something like that. So basically we're using this as a plugin over a lot of different sounds mixed in together for one piece, right? So it's bus processing, right? And now it says here parallel. So what does that necessarily mean, right? So as we go to these different graphs here, we can see that this display over here is going to kind of change, right, to our compressor, to saturation, to the filter, to the EQ, and so on and so forth. And if we come in here to our lanes and we start messing around here, we can see this graph change into a basically a diagram of where our signal is going, right? So this is gonna be the parallel part, the parallel part where it processes our signal, right? So over here on the left, our signal is gonna be coming in, and depending on how we set these things up, which we're gonna go through in depth in the later video, but just as an overview to kind of look at this first, we can kind of decide where we are gonna be sending our signal and how we're gonna actually mix all these things together. So with that being said, there's a couple different paths. So three specifically, we have a dry path, we have a compressor path, and we have a saturation path. So what we can do is if we're looking at this diagram right over here, we can see that our signal goes in, it passes through our EQ for the center line, then it passes through the compressor, and then it goes to the compressor path. But right now it's muted as we can see this M, right, which is located here, and we can see the differences change. We can also change the volume, and then also that reflects that small little circle down over here. So if you mute this again, that'll be muted, and if we unmute the dry path, it'll unmute here. So basically looking at this graph, right, we follow our signal in and where does it go? So for this dry path, it goes up here and then it goes all the way to the right to the dry path. So in this dry path, there's really no processing going. If we would just listen to this dry path, it would be like there's really no plug-in on, uh, on this track at all. So we look at this horizontal line right over here, it'll go through the EQ, then it'll go through the compressor, and then it goes to the output of the comp path, which is exactly what we see here, right? Because this filter is disabled. It goes through the EQ, there's no filter, it's disabled, and then it goes to the compressor, and then it goes to the output. So for the saturation path, we see these lit up things here. So it goes to the EQ, no filter, then it goes to the compressor, and then the saturation. And we can follow the same thing on this diagram. The signal goes in, it gets processed by an EQ, the output of the EQ goes into the compressor, and it goes out of the compressor, and then it goes down, and then it goes into the saturation, then out of the saturation path, which is exactly what we see right over here. So that's kind of just the routing in a nutshell. Like I said, we're going to get really in depth and see all these different combinations and why we want to do something like that. So down over here, we have this EQ. Now we're looking at this, we have three bands, right? We have two shelves and then we have a center peaking EQ, which we're gonna get into more. But basically we might look at this and think, okay, we have three bands of EQ, one's peaking and two are shelves. Why would we want something so restrictive, right? Because now in digital, we have all these bands of EQs. We have different types of EQs, very, very advanced EQs. So why on earth would we want something so limiting? And the reason for that is, is this EQ, the curves basically model from the Poltec EQs sound very, very good. And it's a very analog vibe sound to it. So sometimes if we have a little bit less to work with, but it's really good quality, sometimes we're going to get a better result than having a thousand bands and really just notching in these filters and that filters and so on and so forth. So that's kind of the thought process you should approach this EQ right over here. And then moving on from the EQ, we have the filter. And again, you might think to yourself, why would we need a filter if we have an EQ, but this is a limited EQ, so on and so forth. So the point of this is with this parallel processing, we can basically send our dry signal to something else or maybe have, fil have the compressor only compress a really certain filtered area, maybe like a band passed filter, have that only be compressed and mixed in with our overall sound. So there's a lot of different combinations and possibilities that we can do with our routing, which really makes this filter shine. And not to mention, we have some resonant peaks on this as well, which we're going to get into. And then this compressor is a very, very nice sounding compressor into uh, really whatever you put into it, whether it's going to be a mix that you want to eventually have mastered. Maybe it's a drum bus. Maybe it's a vocal bus. Maybe it's some other bus that I don't even know about. Maybe it's your bus to school, something like that. I don't really know what you put on your bus. But anyway, after this really nice compressor, we have some nice saturation to kind of give it a little bit more extra harmonics. And we can go over here and we can say if we want more even harmonics, odd harmonics, thick, you know, we've got to have thick. Although I think that should be with two C's nowadays. But anyway, we have thick over here. And then at the very end here, we have some clipping, which this actually sounds kind of nice. And we're going to have a demonstration. I have this track here. 
maybe some of you might recognize that, but we're going to use that overall through this course and kind of see how this uh, affects the sound. And then at the very end, we have our output trim. So basically all of our paths mixed together, then we can kind of decide how loud or how quiet we want to, uh, to output our signal. And on the other side, we also have the input trim. So this is going to be important to, let's say your signal is a little bit too hot coming into this plugin. You can always back it off a little bit, or if it's too quiet and you really need some more signal to really get the compressor going, then you kind of want to reach over here and increase it. And there's also this linking button over here. So if you notice how I go left and right, you see how like the opposite of input trim will change it accordingly. So that's something to keep in mind and then another thing if you move the output trim by itself that's going to be always independent regardless of the link so it's only the input is going to be changed right here and if you don't like that at all you can always disable it so this green little button here and they won't be linked anymore like that so uh yeah, this is basically just kind of overviewing, looking at this thing, kind of getting ourselves a little bit familiar with, with Bus Force. It's a very, very cool plug, and I highly suggest you try it out. So you can get it in the Arturi FX Collection 3, or you can get it individually if this is maybe just something you want, or you don't want all the uh, all the collection in the FX Collection, you just want this guy. That's also a possibility to do. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something, even though this is kind of just a, a brief overview, kind of just looking at it, kind of getting our feet a little bit wet. In the next video, we're going to dive into the equalizer because the way this plugin, I think, should be taught is we need to learn every single module before we can even think about the different routings because if we don't understand every single knob and in, in module in this plugin, then the routing in kind of co combining those different things is going to be kind of useless if we don't have the foreknowledge of what all this stuff does down over here. So yeah, thank you for watching. Next video, like I said, we're going to go into the EQ and see what that thing's all about. So we'll see you in the next video.